Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us again. Sadie Anderson and myself are going to join Pastor Josh today and ask some more questions. I know that last week's, if you haven't watched them yet, go back and watch those. Um, But this week we've just got some more questions that we know that we need to dig down a little deeper in. Let's do it. So I think Sadie is actually going to lead in and start out. Yeah. So um, Josh, I know when I had a conversation with you about this, The very first thing I said to you was, listen, I'm not questioning your leadership because I have no doubt you are on your knees in prayer about this, but I will be honest with you. We are so disappointed that we just can't come to church now. Yeah. Um, And we're so frustrated with so much that's going on, not Mm -hmm. just us, but I know so many of us are just so frustrated by things that seem so out of our control. Yeah. And now we feel like... Oh, now we can't even go to church. And I remember as I was processing all of this, I was just kind of having this conversation with the Lord about how, again, frustrated I was that I felt like there were people in our community, like a community that my husband and I are in that would be receptive to going to church right now. And I can't even invite them to church. But the Lord very quickly corrected me and said, well, that's kind of the easy way out. Just get them to church and let... Josh do all the work. Sure. So <laughs> I, as I've kind of processed through that, um, like some seeds have been planted in my heart and our heart as a family. So the question was, yeah. with that, what is your vision for having community and yeah. connection during this season? Do you, is it in-home gatherings, um, like sun, like Bible studies? Um, what kind of resources are you thinking? Like just... Yeah, Your it's a great it's that. a great question, and I you know I know that many of us share those feelings and are also um, really being open and flexible to what God wants to do next. And I don't want to Jesus juke, but at the same time, I think that God at the center of those decisions is really important. So I love the conclusion that you came to was like, okay, wait, this is kind of the easy way out for me to just pawn it off onto someone else. What do I do? And so um, the thing that I love about the starfish model and using that language and continuing to use that language is that the options are limitless, like literally limitless. Whatever a person can imagine, they're free to exercise and go do. That, um, that obedience doesn't have to be confined to specific directives. Like, hey, there's been times where we've said, hey, we're gonna do this challenge. We're gonna do this giving challenge. We're gonna do this serve day. We're gonna do this. That's very much a, a spider centralized way of thinking. So my heart, my passion in seeing the local church thrive in this season is that we would just become uber creative that whatever we can conceive, whatever we can think of, we go and do that. It could be through anything from golf to cards to around our home in a Bible study with friends who have a rich history in scripture and um, of a relationship and faith in church. Like that's where, that's where those four areas are so important to me. Lost people saved, saved people pastored, pastor people discipled and disciple people mobilized. It's time for the people who have been in Christ for long enough to know better, to do better and to be mobilized. And like, this is the, this is the permission. Hey, go, go do. That was always Jesus command was go and do. And I think we've interpreted that through an Americanized church pastor lens. Go and take. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or whatever whatever comes into a person's mind, they just revert back to that. Yeah. yeah. So I mean I, I could I could go on and on about that. I just see I see that that this is the the buddings of a new kind of revival, a new move that people partner with. And actually, like I felt if it's not too much to say it this way, at times I felt like I am on the receiving end of the blessing of obedience and wonder if all of our church family is on the cutting edge of that blessing as well by being able to weekly and daily say, this is what's in my heart to do to help humanity. I wanna do that Mm -hmm. rather than just kind of confine it again into Mm -hmm. the spider, the centralized location. Like the starfish is just obedience, 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 and it's just completely without a limit. It's amazing. And I like how you're you're not going into it with the thought process of like 
I kind of hate this term, but micromanaging mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That people can have their freedom to do it. Right. Um, because not everybody's set out to stand on a stage and preach mm -hmm. and not everybody's set out to do, you know, like a set down mm -hmm. full on Bible study, but rather just simply going golfing or right. getting a group of people together and just having enlightening conversation mm -hmm. yeah. can help in building those relationships down absolutely. the road. Yeah. Can open doors for more conversation down, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, w w people are people are already grouping. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I think we've I think I think what the church has been guilty of in my opinion and 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 you know, some of the things I'm saying are new for me to verbalize but old in how mm -hmm. I felt. You know, there is a there is a gravitational pull to what you're used to and to what you've what you've known mm -hmm. and what you've already experienced. But I think that so much of the church has delegated their responsibility to serve and to lead and to obey to staff and pastors and leaders that we've forgotten that each of us gets to take that step. And that like that my main assignment is to push people toward a point of mobilization to where they're the hands and the feet of Jesus. Maybe I can give you an analogy. In virtually every sporting event and every um, athletic event, endeavor that I'm aware of. I know basketball best. Um, there's five individuals from each team on the court. They're achieving a certain goal to win the game, right? It's actually against the rules for the coach to even step on the playing field, mm -hmm. step on the court. And actually the moment the coach steps on the court, he or she gets a technical foul. Which is which is a really big deal. To get, it turns the tables completely on the on the event, and so like we need to look at our church and at what's next in those terms. Um, I have the honor of being the coach, and it's absolutely against the rules for me to step foot on the playing field. So like. No micromanagement at all is involved in that. Yeah. It's like, hey, oh, you missed that block. You should have taken this shot because that outside perspective helps the, the player, the athlete, be the best that they can be without being overshadowed by the coach's expertise or even ability mm -hmm. at that game, right? right? So I think that's just really, really good picture. People yeah. say, hey, can't get on the court. Mm -hmm. Not allowed. Mm -hmm. It's against the rules. I think it's a really good picture of how Christ look at the church. Mm -hmm. good. That's good. Thanks. And while you were talking today, I wrote down like the Lord has all wired us individually with different passions and things that we get excited about. And he has purposely put people in our circle. Yeah. So there's a lot that is um, purposeful. Mm -hmm. Everything's purposeful through him. So I would encourage people to just not overthink this. Yes. Just like what excites you and look at who the Lord's put you around. Yeah. And just. My brain is exploding. I'm going to jump in and interrupt yeah. because like that's what I started to say and, and didn't finish was, was, was that we as a church, we do overthink. Mm -hmm. Like we're doing life. We're going to the grocery store. We're going to our kids' ball games. We're doing those things. You know, I've gotten frustrated with losing to baseball and football bitty league. Like, like mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. a pastor will tell yeah. you this is the truth. Baseball season starts and football season starts and cheerleading starts. And there's a mass exodus of that season on Sunday right. morning because that's not sacred anymore. Hey, yeah. it's whatever. I can't control that. Right. But it is the way it is. Mm -hmm. And it's like we've asked people to start and stop, start and stop. Like put on the church hat and I'll put mm -hmm. on this. No, 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 no. Just live because everywhere yeah. you go, you're a human who is supposed to be salt and light. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I think you need to prioritize right. putting God first. And I'm not giving people, I'm actually not giving people permission to not do that. <laughs> the truth is <laughs> people are doing that with or without my permission. Right. It doesn't yeah. seem to really right. matter. But the, the point that I'm making is like, go be that mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. You yeah. don't, you don't become a Christian only in the building. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You've given yourself to that everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason to compartmentalize and say, oh, okay, now I have to be churchy. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. I can be baseball-y. And now I can be football-y. Yeah. And now I can be cheerly. No, 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 no. Just be. Yeah. Be who you are. And that takes all the pressure off. And don't overthink it. It's like, just be who you are. Yeah. Be the salt and light. And remember that people are looking for answers and looking for someone to help make a difference in their life. Right. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I have a kind of a comment and then a piggyback question off Sweet. of that. Um, so I noticed in our group of friends that we're very close with, 
I would say probably 80% of them are church friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what are some practical ideas, I guess, in this world of isolation that we aren't at? Yeah. We're not able to be spectators at, you know, sporting mm -hmm. events or we're yeah. not at a PTO meeting or whatever your yeah. activity is, the fair or whatever. Um, what are some things that you could encourage people to get out and reach some people that maybe aren't in their already mm -hmm. Great question. Brandon circle? One of the things that I want to say is I absolutely have grown to hate the phrase socially distanced. Right. <laughs> I mean, yes. I, I, that's yeah. the phrase that, and I understand what they're saying. What I think is a more accurate thing to say is physically distanced. Mm -hmm. But I think we've subconsciously socially distanced ourselves. Right. Oh yeah, we definitely Right, and have. so we're like, we're like, now we're, I remember the first time we were, I was in a, a group setting after this season of, of quarantine and whatnot. It was almost like, people were learning all over again social skills. Mm -hmm. It was like back to the first day of almost like school, if you will, like, oh, are we supposed to shake? Are we supposed right. to hug? Hey, what, are we supposed to hug? What are we supposed to do? And so I think that that, I would say that physically distanced is probably the more accurate term. So I would start with that mindset that we've said socially distanced, socially distanced, mm -hmm. socially distanced so much. We've just done it. Yeah. We, we've forgotten that social has nothing necessarily to do with physical proximity. Mm -hmm. Right. Social is an emotional connection. Physical is a geographical thing, mm -hmm. right? So like we're we're physically close, but more importantly, we're socially close. So I would say like, what are the things that come natural to you? Some of you are gonna be phone people, some of you are not. Mm -hmm. My wife will tell me, I hate being, I hate being on the, are you, are you, you hate the phone? <laughs> yeah. What, how are you on the phone? Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. So you're not a phone person, but listen, yeah. you not being a phone person isn't gonna change my rhythm, I am. Right. I'll get yeah. on the phone and I'll just, I'll just socially with people uh -huh. over the phone. Some people are like, hey, um, maybe we can't be physically close. Can I come in your driveway and wave at you through the window? Mm -hmm. Can I send you a text? Mm -hmm. Can I can I do something that's outside of maybe what's natural and normal for me mm -hmm. for their benefit? Right. Let me give you an example of something that I've been doing. I have been, like as an, on a practical level, mm -hmm. I have been reaching out to local leaders that I know, not from church. Mm -hmm. They share a similar level of responsibility. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I do? I'm giving them the words that I want to hear. That's good. I'll give you an example. I'll call them and say, hey, you're doing a really good job. You're in a, you're in a damned if you do, damned if you don't mm -hmm. position. Oh, yeah. You're getting hammered from both sides. Yeah. I want you to hear my voice say, I think you're crushing it. Uh -huh. I think you're doing a good job. And I think our community is better for you being in it small gestures of mm -hmm. encouragement have a massive impact on people. Yeah, yeah, so like find people in your world, moms, uh, mm -hmm. people work, moms who work inside the home or outside the home, entrepreneurial families, mm -hmm. you know, whatever world you're in, right. you have that natural connection. Exactly. Right. Use that to your right. advantage in terms of breaking the ice and just saying, hey, I was thinking about you today. Who doesn't like to be thought of? Right, right. yeah. Right? Like, who doesn't yeah. like to get a text? Hey, I was thinking about you. Are you winning today? How well are you doing? When I talk to Matthew, that's the first thing he says, yeah. you're winning today, Josh. I'm like, yep, but not by as many points as I would like to, but I'm winning. Right. You know what I mean? Or, right. nope, I'm coming from behind today. Or, yeah. I, I'm, I'm rooting for an overtime. Yeah. You know? So, so like, those, that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. I would find the, the areas that are the most natural for you, mm -hmm. and you're going to find that that is where your strongest spiritual connections are. Mm -hmm. Like, get out of your own head. Yeah. Yeah. Quit overthinking it. Mm -hmm. Like, just be a human. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right? Just be a person. Right, yeah. Like, you know how to interact. Just go and do that. Forget it. That's what I, that's what I think I'm trying to say when I say we've, we've made it more complicated than it needs mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. we've, we've churchified it. Yeah. Not sure if it's a word, but we've, <laughs> we've overcomplicated those things and, like, thought, oh, now i got to take off this brain and think through uh -huh. this brain. No, no, no. no just be you right. and make those connections. It'll work. Good. I yeah. promise it'll work. Good. It's good stuff. I think that's good. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. I hope that was helpful in giving you some insight into this. Um, so thank you, Josh. Appreciate My pleasure. It. Yep. yep.